We're good. Spot We're good. All right. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would ask you to please stay standing for the um, invocation for the prayer, and we welcome Max Starring. Um, for the actually, you can all sit. All, you want him to sit? Yeah. Okay, we'll sit. Yeah. I appreciate being asked here by Carrie to be here today. Uh, my wife and I have lived here for 35 years, half my life. I'm still obviously a flatlander, according to uh, people feel about that. And I've uh, had the blessed to serve as the pastor of Faith Bible Church for 32 and a half of all those years. And to allay any front page church state fears, right away, I saw this this morning, I'm just going to share two Bible verses. And I also want to share a prayer, snippets of a prayer from this. Oh, don't worry. This is long. It's the centennial celebration of the incorporation of the town of Littleton, July 4th, 1884. That's cool. Very interesting document. Cool. So I'm going to share a prayer from that. First of all, I just want to share two verses. The first one is from Jeremiah 29, 7, that urged the Israelites who are in exile, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I've called you. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. And then the Apostle Paul, in a similar way, urged church people like me, 1 Timothy 2, to first of all make petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving for all those in authority, <laughs> I'm looking at you, <laughs> that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness, and this is good and pleases God. Anybody here want to live peaceful and quiet lives in a prosperous town? Yes. I think we all do. It's my personal prayer for you, our elected authorities, that you will have all the wisdom you'll need to lead our community well. And may also be able to heal any ailments it may have. And what a great place to do this in. After all, this is the healed room. <laughs> Sorry for the pun. Can't resist that. So here's some of the things that the Reverend George Curl, the pastor of the Methodist Church, in 1884 prayed for our town. I've gotten rid of all of these and those, because I stumble over them anyway, and any easily misunderstandable words that don't really work today. But I'm sharing this since, to my mind, it still applies to our town today and tomorrow. So here goes uh, the prayer from 1884. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, maker of all things, Judge of all men, we thank you for life and its blessings. We bless your name for the leadings of your providence, which has brought us together to enjoy this centennial anniversary, 1884. We ascribe all glory to your name, that as a people we've been prosperous, peaceable. Lord, continue to use these blessings and help us to appreciate your gifts. We rejoice that as responsible beings, we have the right to form and maintain a government for ourselves. Help us, O oh God, to use our liberty and influence for what is right, so we may seek every seek the culture of the good, the true and the beautiful, and strive to lift our town up. We pray that the degree of success which we, may, we have had may continue, and that what is right may triumph over wrong. May we remember that our success is in you. Bless the exercises of today. May all be done decently and in order. And as we see from the past how you've led us, Grant to continue to lead and keep us as a people. And I, for one, can say amen to that. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So public hearings. We're going to have a motion to approve the 79E application submitted by the Rail Trail Village. Um, we put this out. It was actually on the ballot. People voted in favor of it. Uh, the applications have all been filled out. And everything that I see looks pretty good on it. Do you want me to read a little bit of um, the, yep. this here? Yeah, you can. So this, this address is at 24 Beacon Street, um, 
The subject pro property is a 12.9 acre and a 2.4 acre parcel with an industrial building previously owned by Hitcher Manufacturing. The applicant is applying for, and he, he's here this evening, um, the applicant is applying for the Community Revitalization Tax re Relied Incentive. Is it re Revitalization? Yeah, but Revitalization? Is that me typing? Yep. You know, that might be one of your words. Um, it's okay. It's all right. Jim's so good about coming up. With, he's so creative. But it's the tax incentive under the RSA 79E. The applicant has provided all the necessary documentation, and it is recommended that the application be approved for the 2022 tax year. So what we have to go over is... The details of of the tax break, um, the number of years that it's valid for, and um, it's up for discussion if anybody wants to. How many years is it valid for? Well, we haven't decided yet. On we this. do need to decide that. Okay, because well, we I was reading this looking for how many years. Right. It's not there. So I okay. So I didn't miss it. So my thoughts are the town is up for reassessment in 2025, Jim? Mm -hmm. um, yes, that's the end reassessment for all properties. For all properties. So we could extend this out until land to let him get his feet underneath him. And then once it's assessed, if you want to resubmit, um, we could look it over again if you're not finished with what you're doing. Um, I was wondering if we could actually, I think, I, I've done one before, another property that I transformed over, you know, there was in dire need as far as work, and they started right off as far as five years, and, they, and, and then if you have additional, if you're adding additional housing, it's an additional two years to that, and then there's another four years, which I know that's not going to happen with that uh, property. But we're hoping for like seven years with this application. And um, the basis of that is obviously it's, it's a big risk for us, but yeah. we, we knew going in that there was a risk. And we also heard that, you know, that the town might be adopting the 79E. So I, I was somewhat familiar with the 79E on the incentive program. Um, the project itself is definitely underfunded, which I'm being very honest about that. And we're going to actually do it in phases, so we have cash flow coming in. Um, so, unfortunately, I wish I could say that I had a, a boat full of money, and we're going to have to finish it, and we're going to move forward. But what we're relying on is to do it in phases. So the first phase, we're going to have about 19 apartments. Uh, say it's still in this maybe phase 1A, we're going to have another 16, and then we're going into the tower. Um, I think it's great for the town, um, obviously. We already got three uh, commercial tenants. One is locked in with a lease, and that's an established business, the Inquo. Mm. And the other two I'm working on leases right now, one's going to be a salon, um, and maybe another restaurant. Um, so there's going to be employment there, and obviously there's, we have a lot on our staff already, you know, being dental contractors, we already hired six. Uh, Littleton folks or surrounding area folks who uh, help us fill out this uh, And you know, I, I think it's a good thing for the town. It's a good thing for us, too. I mean, I'm nervous. I am <coughs> taking a lot of risk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a lot on the line here. Yeah. And just for the record, I am not no big-time developer that just came with the town. I mean, you see the way I'm dressed. <laughs> I'm picking with a shovel, just like the guys, as much as I can. And I am in the office, too. I'm trying to balance everything, just like Robbie and the rest of my clients. Yeah, and you know, so we're hoping that we can get the seven years, but if you recommend, you know, we're willing to, to work with anything, you know. Um, we really need, we're, we're really hoping that we can rely on that cash flow coming in from the rents to put back into our capital so we can continue on with this project. Which, don't be worried either, we're still gonna, we're still gonna move along. We got a ways to go before that, you know, that's kind of dried up, but, you know, I think we'll probably have around 70 apartments completed. 
with the plan that we have now, and probably maybe 10,000 square feet of commercial space, hopefully at least by then. But then we're going to be relying on for that extra capital to come in with commercial leases and also the residential leases. And, um, hey, I don't know if anybody can buy the building, but it's definitely, you know, we're really Absolutely. working very hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. All of us. Flatland is in. <coughs> yeah. There's no bill as we call them. Yeah. <laughs> but we're a great team, and it, it is exciting to bring it all back to life. So, I guess what I'm saying is it's not going to go away after four years. Yeah. We're just going to have to relook at it yeah. and see how far along you are. Okay. And then, you know, like I said, everything's going to get appraised in 2025. Okay. And uh, you know, we'll be glad to work with you. All right. Keep yeah. you going. Yeah. Could we write it up that way? Um, where instead of committing to it, just... Like Al had shared, you know, commit to the the five years, and then reassess without a um, de definitive number. Yeah, the, I, I I checked with the town attorney, and the way the application is is written, you don't have that option on here. That doesn't mean you can't revisit that. But your decision tonight is to set the term, and then after that, that's a whole separate process. But you don't have somewhere on here to say we'll do two years, and then we'll check it again in three years. So if we decide on five years, he has to fill out a complete application again? I can't. I'm, you don't honest, know that. I'm not even sure that, okay. that that's how that works. Al may be better than me if he's done yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think after like five years, I can request an extension. Okay. To the 79 okay, so it's um, easier than having to reapply for the entire... Yes. Okay. Okay. But it's after five. Yeah. After five. After five. Yeah. Okay. And Alan Sound went through this. It's, it's in Southern New Hampshire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alan Sound New Hampshire. They, they just implemented it too at the time. I think that was one of the first, I think it was the first one there too. And that was a five year. And then they said, you know, you can revisit again after five years right. or ask for an extension. I did not ask for an extension because I was done with the building of what I had to do. So. so, what percentage are you going to have done this year? Do you know? Because you have uh, at least one commercial space oh, done, yes, or yeah. all three commercial spaces I, will I be would, done? That's a good question. I would say that we're going to have a minimum of 35 residential apartments okay. done and probably have that's good, so that's three good commercial amount. leases. You know, once completed now, yeah. they're, they're fitting up the space and everything. But I'd say at a minimum, that's an absolute. Okay. Anything else above and beyond, we're definitely kind of, you know, it's going to be good. Uh, but yeah, we already have, without even really advertising, we have like 25 apartments rented. Today. That's Ooh. wonderful. And That's wonderful. Even, I mean, I've taken people to the space, and it's like, I feel terrible because literally, like, I'm holding some elderly people and I'm helping some younger people and trying to control the vision, you know, because it's, it's like it's like a war zone in some areas, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, in about four weeks, it's going to be like a flower blowing from the outside. Yeah, because when, when I toured it, was that in what, February, March? Oh, yeah. You had the framework up in the far left building and you were working I think you had would been working on the siding which was done and you the, the framing in the studios and the one bedrooms that you can see you know if you have any sort of an imagination or artist background you can see the vision that he has for the property um, I my the first number that came to my mind was five years so I don't know what you and Carrie and Roger feel So uh, we're just kind of going off from the 2025 reappraisal thing to try to get this, everything in line. Um, with what you have going and what I've seen, I don't have any problem going to five years. I don't know if, if that's what you need to get. And then if you can, you know, need it to file for an extension, um, we can cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. No, that, that's more than reasonable. More than reasonable. I mean, we're fine with that. Thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's very impressive. It's going to be very impressive. Thank huge, you. huge improvement. Yeah. And we, we use a lot of local vendors and contractors, so there's a lot of good things happening. A lot of work coming in wrong. Mm. Yeah, exciting. I've talked to local contractors that are working there for you. Yeah. yeah.
Top notch. Yeah. 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 Um, so we need a motion. Do you want to open it up for questions? Oh, yeah, I guess we can. Open because it up we have for questions. We have to leave it at least until 5:20. Yeah. Saturday, 5:05. Yeah. Okay. Right. So it has to be 50 minutes. Uh, yeah, Rudy. Yes. Now this is going to be a project like uh, the cannery up in uh, Saranac. I mean, uh, you give this gentleman over oh, yeah, here a taxi break for uh, how many years? Five years. Five years. Five years. Five years, okay. The people before you guys, they did the same thing with the tannery, okay? I think they gave them five, five years, you know, of a tax break. And uh, uh, unfortunately, at this I, I can say, you know, right back on the table, but the guy over there, he made a lot of money on us taxpayers and uh, the time a little time, but he was one, this gentleman is a, a different guy. <coughs> now, do, you know, do you have everything, you know, on paper, everything that is going to do it from, uh, starting from tonight to that time, you know. It's all right here. It's going to yes. accomplish whatever it's supposed to accomplish. Yes. Uh, uh, I would like to know, you know, it's uh, this five years of uh, break and taxation, it's not that there's none. It's just a break. It's He's, a break, yeah. He yeah. still pays taxes on the current value. Right. Yeah, he, still pay, he still pays taxes on the current value, Rudy. Oh, it's just that... The building? Like an yes, empty factory. Yes, yes. He still pays property taxes on the building and the property. But what, it will, what the five years will do will keep him at that current status. Once the five years, we can revisit it. Once he's built out, then the tax rate will change because he has built out. In the, in the time, we may accomplish whatever it's supposed to accomplish. Right. Before the five years, this is all money that goes into his pocket, right? No, it's a good question. It is a, it's a good, it's a good question. question. It's a good question, but he is... He is I, you know, and a lot of people, you know, they look at me and it's like, you know, I'm a kind of... I mean, just ask a question. If anybody doesn't want to listen to my question, the door is over there. <laughs> okay, no, no problem. What I'm trying to say is, uh, you give him a break, which is good. Right. That guy's got to do a lot of work and I'm the only. I know that. Yeah. Have you but toured it? In the time, before the five years, that he's going to start to pay, you know, what he's supposed to pay, this is the moment that goes in his pocket. So let me understand what you're asking. You're asking if, is, if he is finished before the five years is up. Yeah. Okay. I, I've been, have you been out? Have you walked the property? Yeah, I've been. You've done the tour? I, it's a lot of work. Yeah, less, less than five years is a pretty yeah. ambitious project to get yeah. that building completely yeah, done. I honestly... So realistically, any yeah. profits that are made in the five years will go back into the building right. to do some more of it. Yeah, to, to, to your point, you're, you're not correct. Yeah. That's, that's where the money is coming in. It was just like the last five years. Yeah. And that's going, literally, it's not coming in our pockets. It's literally being forced right back into the building. Right. Otherwise, we're going to have half an empty shell there. Yeah. If we don't, not half, but, you know, there's going to be a percentage of that building. Right. We are definitely not going to be able to complete. I mean, between COVID and the supply chain issues and inflation, you can only imagine. It's not like things went up five percent, ten percent. It's like a hundred percent. Yeah. But I would say that you know it's definitely you know we we cannot finish the building, and I don't want to walk away from a building that's going to be a portion of it's going to be vacant, unless you know that's why when we purchased the building, we heard that the town was considering a seventy nine award. I hope so because that obviously is going to help us, mm -hmm. and then we're just going to take those funds and just put it right back into the building. Right. Yeah, we have no choice if we want to finish the bill. Right. Can I just say something for clar yeah. clarification? Um, just for clarification too, Rudy, this is the first time we've done a 79E here in Littleton. So the Saranac building was something different. Um, just to make sure that we're, we're clarified on that. So no, this is the it's first it's, That's great. Time. I congratulate him, you know, to do what he's supposed to do. Yeah. What I'm talking about, it's money-wise. <clears throat> because, you know, eventually, if there's a gentleman who's going to start to pay it, 
whatever is supposed to pay before right. the five years, that is mean less money is going to come out of my pocket. Right. Quote unquote tax pay. Right. But, right. you know, but, you know I don't, God bless you, you know, so do whatever you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> Any more discussion on this? Um, no. Are we so do we have time wise? Yeah. I think it's 520. Do we have verbiage on exactly how the motion needs to be stated? Um, that's what I was looking for the cover sheet. I know it's not there. But it would, I mean, it's, it's just a motion for you to approve 79E right. on this property for X number of years. Okay, so I will make the motion that we accept the 79E um, five-year um, application. application for this specific property, rail the Rail Trail Village. Okay. Is that all second? Mm -hmm. all, in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Vicki always makes me sound good, so I'm not worried. <laughs> Thank you. We can close the public hearing. Make, I'll make a motion, motion that we close the public hearing. Okay. I'll second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. <laughs> yes, thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Yeah. We just got a little shot right home, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours? Um, an hour and 45 minutes. I think we're already an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I worked in Boston for 20 years. I'll take this right. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little bit easier than driving into Boston. <laughs> next on the agenda, presentations on financial. Uh, on and, and Coke. You're up. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good to see some of you again. Yeah. Uh, some of you for the first time. Uh, this is. I think such a record for me for the uh, <laughs> third audit that I presented for one municipality in about a nine month period. Uh, so it, it's, it's been a lot of work, but uh, we got there. Just we got you. great to say. Uh, I want to kind of go over some of the documents that we provide uh, at the conclusion of our audit tonight. Uh, these documents are still in draft form. Uh, they still need to go through a final quality control review on our end, but. Uh, for all intents and purposes, the, the audit's been completed. Mm -hmm. uh, once that final quality control review is done, these will be able to be officially uh, released, uh, barring any questions that the board has. So if you do have questions after tonight's presentation, feel free to either reach out directly through lawyer Jim, um, and we can always discuss those before these final reports are released as well. Um, so mm -hmm. As part of the audit, um, we provide a number of letters as well as uh, our opinion on the town's financial statements. Uh, I'm going to step through those letters briefly, uh, kind of touch on some of the highlights, uh, as well as go over some of the highlights in the financial statements themselves. If anybody has any questions, feel free to, to ask either at the conclusion or just stop me as I'm going along. Uh, so the first letter that we provide is our governance letter. Uh, this is kind of a big picture view of some of the highlights of the audit process. Um, some of the things that we discuss are significant accounting policy changes of the town during the year. Um, if we ran into any significant difficulties, uh, material audit adjustments, and those sorts of things. So some of the takeaways from the governance letter this year for 2021, uh, no new accounting policies adopted uh, by the town. Uh, application of existing accounting policies has remained consistent. So when you're looking at 2020 versus 2021, there's uh, some good comparability there between those numbers. Uh, management and finance personnel were incredibly helpful uh, in completing the audit. Again, like I said, this is not only my third time presenting in a nine month period, uh, but your finance department's third audit that they've had to go through mm. in getting the town kind of caught up <laughs> to where you want to be uh, in roughly that same period of time. So. It's a pretty heavy lift, and uh, they were very helpful in completing that. And then material audit adjustments. Um, these were adjustments that we proposed throughout the course of the audit, uh, based on our audit procedures performed, and represent kind of material differences between the numbers that were originally presented to us for audit and the final numbers that go into the financial statements. Uh, there was really kind of three material audit adjustment categories, if you will, uh, that we had. One was for fair value adjustment to investments. 
Um, another was to adjust for tax receivables not collected within 60 days after year end. And then finally, uh, an adjustment to grant revenues to record a liability for unspent ARPA funds. Um, in general, if you compare that to the 2020 governance letter and the material audit adjustments there, you'll find the list is much shorter, uh, which is good because that means that the information that you're looking at throughout the course of the year is more consistent with the numbers that are ultimately going to go into the financial statements. Um, these audit adjustments that we had are very common types of audit adjustments um, that we would normally expect to see in most municipalities. So moving from there into our letter on internal controls, uh, this is where we communicate any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies identified during the audit. Um, you'll notice that I think the 2020 letter was four or five pages long, 2021 it's just one page, yeah. um, which is good. This is absolutely a letter where less is more. Um, we didn't identify any deficiencies in internal controls that we consider to be material weaknesses for 2021. Um, to kind of recap, some of the things that we identified in 2020 um, were general ledger maintenance, uh, delays in adjusting journal entries, the volume and complexity of those adjustments that were required during the year uh, to kind of try to keep the numbers on track. In reviewing journal entries this year, the journal entries were far more straightforward, easier to follow through. There was better documentation behind those journal entries, so that was a marked improvement. Uh, we also noted in 2020 the cash reconciliation process was several months behind, um, and really as far as 2020 reconciliations being completed in June of 2021, uh, compared to this year, the December cash reconciliations were completed in late January. Again, that's, that's really what you want to see. Um, and then finally, the payroll process. In 2020, we noted a number of instances where there was either a lacking documentation of pay rates, um, lacking approval on time of work, or in some cases, payroll transactions being processed outside of that normal uh, payroll processing um, control environment. For 2021, um, we did have, uh, we did a number of testing over payroll transactions, and as I'll get to in the management recommendation letter, uh, the process was cleaned up dramatically. We didn't notice any transactions processed outside of the standard payroll processing, um, and while we did know two instances of documentation, uh, it was a far cry better than what we had found in 2020. Uh, that then brings us into our management recommendation letter. This is where we communicate matters that are of a far less um, significance than what would rise to a material weakness in your internal controls, um, or just general observations where you know, things could be tightened up. Um, basically, you're doing things well, but you know, where could you possibly improve? So again, payroll documentation, as I, as I just said, we had one instance of a missing rate of pay form on file, one instance of uh, lack of approval on title. Uh, so, you know, all in all, that's a, a good job. Um, it just, you know, continue to kind of tighten up the process as, as you progress forward. Uh, the other recommendation that we had was over debt service. And this is a perfect example of something that isn't wrong, um, but is an opportunity to potentially improve. Um, and what we noticed was that uh, while debt service payments were being allocated between the funds um, based on budgetary authorization, basically you, you approved the budget, it included certain debt service payments, and that's how you made those debt service payments, there wasn't consistency from year over year, and there also wasn't a, a process to look back and reflect on what went into the budget versus what actually happened. Uh, the reason that we recommend doing those sorts of things is because, let's say you allocate debt costs um, based on anticipated borrowing and the borrowing doesn't happen. If you allocate debt service costs based on the budget, you might allocate debt service to a fund where the borrowing never actually took place inadvertently. Uh, and again, you, yes, you are authorized to do that because that's how the budget was structured, um, but it may not have been your intent when, when developing the budget. So, it's good to kind of look back and see, okay, you know, are we doing what we really intended to do? Mm -hmm. uh, that really wraps up our, our observations through the internal control and the uh, management recommendation letter. For anybody that's been here for my last few presentations, you'll notice that that was a lot shorter than uh, some of the discussions <laughs> we had previously. Uh, so moving into the financial statements, uh, the town once again received an unmodified opinion for 
will be receiving an unmodified opinion on its financials. This is the highest level of opinion you can receive, often referred to as a clean opinion. Um, means that the financials are presented in all material respects in accordance with the or generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, in looking at the financials themselves, total current assets decreased approximately 2.2 million from 2021. Uh, these are things like cash, taxes receivable, grants receivable, um, your, your most highly liquid assets. Uh, that decrease was largely offset by a similar decrease in current liabilities of about 3.4 million. Um, and the big driving factor there was a tax anticipation note that the town had taken out in the end of 2020. It was repaid in early 2021, so obviously you're going to use cash to pay that off. Um, but it takes the liability off the books. So if you kind of take that away, really your, your net increase between your current assets and liabilities actually improved by almost $2 million year over year. It's what you want to see. Uh, Non-current assets, this is uh, your capital assets, your property, plant, equipment, land, things of that nature, remain relatively consistent year over year. Uh, decreased about 184000 which is less than 1% of the total fixed assets of the town. Uh, and this was really just depreciation expense of about $1.5 million offset by capital acquisitions of about $1.3 million. Long-term liabilities declined by approximately $2.1 million in the current year. Biggest portion of this decline was pension and OPEB allocations from the New Hampshire retirement system. Um, you don't really have direct management control over these things. You're a member of New Hampshire retirement. There's nothing you can do about it. They allocate their, your piece of the pie to you based on your contributions. Um, that decrease in liabilities was actually offset by a couple other balances. So really, when you take all of that New Hampshire retirement system activity into account, it, it was actually pretty flat with the previous year. Net position, which is really the bottom line number. This is, um, if you're familiar with looking at business financial statements, this would be your equity. Um, increased by roughly $1.3 million uh, for the year. And again, a big part of that was driven by really budgetary savings, uh, which I'll get to in just a moment. Uh, on the governmental fund basis, the general fund, that's what you think of as like your operating fund. Uh, that's where the, the main operations of the town are accounted for. Ended the year with an unassigned fund balance of about 1.5 million. Um, that represents approximately 6% of your gross appropriations, uh, which is within your range of 5 to 8% based on your fund balance policy. Uh, I don't recall the exact number off the top of my head, but uh, our first presentation, that unassigned fund balance number was about half a percent. So that's a big turnaround um, in the prior year. And the reason that's so important is that really your unassigned fund balance in many ways represents your fiscal cushion. Um, you know, as a December year end, you start your budget year January 1st. You don't actually raise taxes on that budget year until July. Mm -hmm. So you're operating that first six months of the year on things that are coming in from the previous period, in, in addition to some other items like motor vehicle permits and whatnot. But really your taxes, which is your big revenue source, are not going to start coming in until July. So having a, a shoestring fund balance um, like what it originally was can put you in, in a bit of a tricky spot and require short-term financing, things of that nature. So um, really started to grow that back, which is a good turnaround. And then likewise on the budgetary basis, um, and this is what would traditionally be reported to like DRA uh, for tax rate setting purposes. Town's general fund ended with an unassigned fund balance of about 1.8 million or 7.7%. And again, that's right in line with your minimum fund balance target uh, based on your own policies. So, you know, really what drove that was financing um, a number of transactions that had been approved for financing in previous periods but just hadn't been executed. Um, so that, that was actually accomplished in 2021, helped to restore a big chunk of that fund balance. And then you had some revenue sources that were a little bit better than what was uh, originally estimated. And likewise, some conservative spending to help save on the expenditure side. And all of those things really combine to make a noticeable difference. So now looking forward, um, new standards for 2022. Something good to keep in mind. Uh, GASB released a new lease standard. Um, really, it feels like forever ago. Uh, it was supposed to go into effect two years ago. COVID happened. They deferred the implementation. So now it's finally going to go into effect for 2022. Big difference of this new standard is that your long-term um, agreements or leases uh, will now be reported on the financial statements 
in the statement of net position, which is your long-term basis, um, as a long-term liability and a right-to-use asset. Um, in some cases, that is how you report existing agreements, such as when you purchase a vehicle, but some of the changes would be uh, long-term rental agreements, for example, would now have to be reported as a long-term obligation, whereas right now they simply flow through as like a rental expense. Uh, and <coughs> so that's a quick summary of the financial statements, quick highlights, um, as well as, like I said, our findings for the year recommendations. If anybody has any questions on them, we'd be happy to field them now. So it sounds like things are looking a lot better. Yeah, I, I, I'd say um, it's been a, a big shift um, and definitely moving in the right direction where you are. Yeah. Big thank you to Lori and yeah. Cheryl and Jim. And this has been awesome. Thank you. A lot of work. Include the directors and the employee in that and some of yeah. the savings. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Yes, we don't Thank you for your report. No, you're, you're very welcome, and uh, probably won't see you again for about another year. So. <laughs> <laughs> no more three and nine months, eh? Yeah. Hopefully not. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I won't not. be here if they are. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. <clears throat>
Also, if anybody says anything to you, the state has not closed the other portion yet. That's what I, I talk, noticed too. I talked to Clint Savage and on <coughs> Thursday or Friday, and he said they're not anticipating closing that for a little while. So there'll, there'll be some some leeway there, as I was discussing gating, which is an issue. Um, some of those places aren't gated properly. Okay. Good. Anything else on the old business? No. I, I have one question. With the gate there, they'll still be able to ride a bike down through there, am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. It was designed for pedestrian and bike. It's like the traffic. gates that are down on the Lisbon Trail? No, they have to improve the, apparently, the access point that uh, Doug's going to put the sign. And until they improve that, they don't want to shut that gate right. on the other side. They okay. won't allow the traffic to go through. And then they'll move that gate up further. Okay, and but a bicycle can go around it? So absolutely. Yeah, so, okay. But there will also gate the other portion of Sioux Town. Okay. That might not happen until later on in the next year. Okay. Okay, new business. Opera House for the acceptance of expenditures of donated funds for the first Friday events. And yeah, the Opera House has um, received an additional 5797 um, donated by various sponsors. And so yep. they're just uh, in a motion to accept that 5797 and authorize them to be utilized um, for first Friday. July 1st, August 5th, and September 2nd. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. There really does seem to be a lot of excitement around the first Friday yep. activities, which is good. It's good. And the first one, even though it poured rain, came off really well. Yeah. Mm. All things considered. <laughs> So now we're looking at um, Public Works, uh, wastewater treatment plant updates, EMS repairs and grant applications. Is yep. that still in the same? Yeah. Doug? Good evening, Chair and Select Board members. Uh, this is a uh, staff's report. Uh, for you to know what's currently going on at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, you'll have it in your staff report there. There's uh, three different items that I just want to update you on. Uh, the first is in regards to the uh, current uh, emergency repair project uh, that Penta Corporation is doing for the town. They've been very successful with their work. Uh, they completed the second screw pump on June 6th. And uh, which is the, the biggest part of their project. The second part was to uh, install a new bar rack. Uh, that uh, has been delayed, but is on track to be delivered in two shipments. Uh, the first one arrived, are being shipped this week, and the second uh, shipped two weeks after that. Uh, so Pentacorp is geared up to be back on site installing the bar rack once those uh, deliveries arrive. Um, we're also working with uh, Laramie Water Resources as a separate contractor um, who's uh, doing some upgrades to the water system at the plant to, also to, pro to provide water to the new bar rack. Um, just some general repairs that were needed in general for the water system, but uh, this is a great opportunity to get that done in, in advance of the bar rack being installed. Um, so that work is also being scheduled through Laramie. Um, and we're also working with Pentacorp to uh, handle some of the insurance claim matters from the fire that occurred. Uh, there's some damage to some of the control gates and piping, some electrical uh, piping. So they're going to be under a change order. They're going to be uh, making those repairs as well. And that will be covered through our Primex uh, insurance claim that we have for that incident. Um, then going on next, kind of some good news. We had a, a kind of a little bit of a concern on, on the town's part of having an inspection from the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. Um, you know, we've been very proactive with the plant there, but there's a lot to be done. But uh, they came out for an annual inspection, uh, what they call compliance evaluation inspection. Uh, it's a an standard annual inspection. Uh, but they were also very much aware of, of our work out there and efforts to, to make these repairs. and the other aspects of the plant that we're trying to get upgraded or replaced. 
So, um, but overall, that inspection went very well. Um, they gave us a favorable uh, inspection report um, and didn't require any further response from the town to, uh, to address any issues. Um, we are under a corrective action plan out there already with DES, so um, we already have quarterly reporting that we're making to uh, NHDES, and our next report is due on July 31st. <coughs> And then thirdly, I wanted to update you on the grant applications. Uh, our consultant, Hoyle Tanner Associates, are actively working on these three applications. Um, received drafts um, last week, and those applications need to be completed this week and submitted. Um, they came out and did a site visit uh, on June 6th, and uh, uh, for their first time coming to the plant to get a, a first-hand feel for the condition of the plant, and so that was very helpful and then helping to prepare those applications. Um, Jim has a number of, you've authorized Jim to represent the town for signing paperwork associated with those applications already. Mm -hmm. I believe that was back on May 6th, that you did, or May 9th, that you did that. Um, so Jim will be signing all the paperwork this week and we'll be getting those applications submitted. Um, it's three applications, uh, a wastewater uh, treatment plant planning grant for 100,000, a wastewater treatment plant improvement, Grant that's ARPA for five hundred seventy-nine thousand, and then a CWSRF loan in the amount of one million three hundred fifty-one thousand, ten percent loan forgiveness. So those are the three different applications that are being prepared. Total value of these grants and loan is two point zero three million dollars. Um, really, a key aspect of Coil Tanner's work and the experience that we're really looking for them to provide the town is their uh, their front work, the, the facility planning work and they'll be pre preparing a comprehensive facilities plan uh, that will include preliminary engineering. So this will be really a full reevaluation of the whole plant from like how it was designed then to what it needs to be now, looking at the permitting requirements now under DES, under our EPA permit. So it will be a really good effort. So we're going to have to you know, expend a decent amount of funds with them to put that comprehensive facility plan together, but really it's, it's going to guide us down the future and it's an important aspect of, of the work that we're doing. Um, they do anticipate two, based off what they know right now, two areas of priority focus. Uh, the first is meeting compliance with our 2020 MPDS permit, uh, <coughs> implemented tighter effluent limits related to phosphorus and copper, and then their second priority is repairing deteriorated treatment plant components and clarifiers have been identified as one of those, that's probably the highest priority. Uh, so that, that completes my presentation on these three aspects going on at the treatment plant. I can answer any questions you have. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So just, it's kind of off this, Doug, but just thinking about, um, of course we're just hearing about the Rail Trail Village with the potential of um, 50 apartments this year and down the road. Um, the impact on our um, system, and then also with Starbucks, impact on our system. And um, as we, we build and grow, um, not that we have the answer tonight, I guess, but just thinking about that down the road, yep. um, expansion and... That is the purpose of the facilities plan, is to relook, to restudy how the plant was designed. What it, it was designed for a certain capacity and certain parameters, but here we are you know, 30 years later right. and things have changed. So that's part of the facilities plan effort is to reanalyze all that. We all want to know that the plant has capacity to serve current residents plus, plus growth. You know, that's everybody's desire. Right. And the plant was designed that way to begin with, but because of all those new requirements for meeting compliance with the permit, we're having to operate the plant differently to meet mm. compliance, which could affect its capacity. But it's a little bit of a question mark right now because we haven't had right. it studied. So, so that's what right. the facilities plan is going to accomplish. Good. And with the equipment failures and stuff down there too, that's put us at, on a struggle um, mm -hmm. once everything's back up and running. From what I understand, we should be over just over 50 percent, correct? 50 percent for as capacity. far as capacity. Um, well, it depends on how you look at it. <laughs> yeah, uh, our flow <coughs> our flow is well below the 50 percent on average. Yeah that are loading from the, uh, some of the chemical loading or biological loading on the plant is well exceeding 50%. Mm. So that's where some of those concerns are in terms of, but the plant's doing a really good job at, at processing and treating what's coming into it. We've, been, we've got very good effluent numbers for the state. So 
but we still are operating the plan different than how it was originally designed mm -hmm. to, to meet permit compliance. Okay. Good. So I hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Um, so, the National Plan Grant application is on public works. Is that still. Right. Okay. Yeah, as Jim, I don't know, we didn't get a sheet on the EMS. You had combined the, the two. The repairs and grant application was on the public works. Emergency repairs. And I think he was updating you on the grant application. Oh. That's okay. okay, so it's yeah. fine. Yeah. All right. Sorry, good. He was updating you. Okay. On an application there for you. Right. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. So... Uh, next on the agenda is the fire department for permission to surplus a vehicle. And for vehicle, is a 2016 Ford Explorer. It was previously used by the police department. Um, it was repurposed in December of 2020 as a staff vehicle for training and EMS response. Discussion with the fleet manager last fall identified some significant issues with suspension and, and the drivetrain of the vehicle. Um, so that's just sitting right now. No Correct. plates, just. Correct, yep. That's been taken out of service and, and just left with that because of the safety issue with the repairs that need to happen. The estimate that you have is the minimum just to get it up to where it needs to be in order to pop it. Um, it doesn't include any of the corrosion problems that the car has. It's going to need new tires. Um, I believe it also needs to be front of the light and all that stuff just because of what's going on with that front end. Um, so it's got some other stuff on top of that estimates that, that, that's there. And from it, it, it basically the vehicles, and I, I don't know the mileage off the top of my head, but I believe it's about 160 or 170,000 miles is what the vehicle has on it. Um, um. So looking at the estimate that came from the dealer, some of the stuff on the estimate was tires, oil change, just routine maintenance stuff. We brought it up to $4,875.80. Um, I mean, I guess if it's not, if it's not on the road anymore and it's just sitting, it probably should be surplus. Okay. Uh, my thoughts? Man, if yeah. it's serviced, will you be able to use it again? And for how long would it be? Will it pass inspection? That's my concern is when it comes time for inspection, I'm not sure that it will pass inspection without having any more work done to it. Be my concern is the first item, um, you know, the poorly welded and replaced, replaced the, kick, the cradle. So somebody cut a hole in the cradle to get in and replace a bushing and then just welded a patch back on it. It yeah. could be fixed yeah. as far as that welding part goes. Um, I don't know what the rest of the cradle looks like. What is a cradle? Uh, that's the part that the engine sets on in the front that bolts up to the okay. body. All right. That all the suspension hangs on. Yeah. And also, um, at a previous meeting, you approved replacement through ARPA funds. So yeah. right. They already have a replacement. So, yeah. we, so, so we, be honest, we need to, to surplus $5, this. $5,000 on right. a vehicle that. Right. Well, that was my concern. Yeah. Why spend $5,000 if you're going to end up having to spend another 5000 in six months? For whatever else goes wrong. That's my concern is that it just becomes a money pit at that point. Right. It was worth keeping if, if people were able to tell me that it wasn't going to have future problems. And that's what I'm kind of being told is that the problems are starting to come through and that it's it's kind of at the end of its life for that. Um, and it's not, I mean, it's not a vehicle that we drive back and forth to work. It's one that's used to emergencies. It was, it was used as a police as vehicle. As a police for vehicle for years. And then got um, transferred. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's gotten its life out of it. And I mean, yeah. 
and maybe and it has 116 in normal times, we wouldn't say necessarily mm -hmm. you would be surplusing that, but in reference to how those vehicles are right. it's a different, like you said, it's not like driving it to and from work. Right, and it has 160,000 miles on it. I mean, I have no problem surplusing this. Could we take it to Thunder Road first? <laughs> For the run with your room? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll make a motion so that we surplus the vehicle. Go ahead. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Okay, my friends. So on the fire department, 2020 building resilient infrastructure and communities BRIC grant. Yeah, that's the official the name for basically our hazard mitigation we have for the emergency yeah. operations plan, okay. um, which is a 75-25 match from the state for funds to basically get that done. It's, it's supposed to be updated every five years. We were supposed to update it last year, but because of COVID, the state allowed us to basically use the previous plan we had and just put in the correct names and positions and sign off on it for a year. Um, and the grant's open right now for us to be able to utilize to use um, I believe it's Max is the name of the company who the town has contracted with previously to, to create that document for us. Okay. And that's at a total cost of twelve thousand dollars. Yes. Seventy-five percent is paid for is, by the state of New Hampshire. Yeah. The other twenty-five percent we can pay for, but I believe in kind um, money for uh, salaries of employees that are working on the committee and stuff to put this together and stuff, I believe can be used to offset that money as well. Um, I've idea. identified that okay. I have it in the emergency management line item. Uh, I have the money allocated for it if we need to spend the money on it. Okay. But my hope is with all the department heads and stuff and the time that we have to spend meeting on this and putting this together with the company to, to identify the hazards, the risk assessments, and what our responses are going to be for that, that that will offset that $3,000 that the town is responsible for. So if you spend two thousand dollars on salaries, it would only be a thousand. Then it'd be a thousand dollars out of the line item. Okay. 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 Looking for a motion. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I make the motion that we accept the terms of the building resilient infrastructure and communities grant as presented in the amount of nine thousand dollars to update the community's local hazard mitigation plan. And the board also acknowledges that the cost of this project will be $12,000, in which the town will be responsible for 25% of the match at about $3,000. I'll second it. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And we'll get some paperwork to sign after. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Fire Department, Opera Grant. Security system upgrades. Um, that is town has received monies designated by the federal government to be used to offset costs and pay for approved projects and expenses. Similar to the police department project for security upgrades in May, security needs to be limited manpower to answer public requests and the public walk-ins for service at different times of the day. So basically just a new... It's a new security, security system, system as well. Um, the fire department right now, we, for whatever reason, we're on a different security system that we have that's different from what the police department, the uh, opera house, and I believe the highway department uses. This would put us on the same system. But it would also give us the uh, the other part of it is the video camera similar to what the police department did back in May so that when we're not there, when somebody pulls up with a medical emergency, um, if we're not there when they push the button for Acton County Watch on the answer, to be able to speak to them and, and give them assistance as well. Um, so we'll put one of those boxes on the front of the station um, and that would bring us into, if you will, the same security system the rest of the town is using um, and make us a secure facility and also allow for the public to be able to get their help from So it looks like it's, it's a total of, um, because it's $1,500 for the yes, police department that, to purchase the ID badges. Yep, they make the ID badges. I didn't have the exact cost of what it was going to be to update those, so I put that in as a, as a 
too that I see it. I don't think it's going to cost that much, but I wasn't able to get the okay. Chief Smith staff to figure out exactly how much that was going to be. $23,290, and the total is to come out of the APA funds money. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we'll give you an update. I apologize. We should have the balance. On the total, yeah. Of what that would have been. I'm going to go by memory, but it might be about 50 some thousand left still from last year's batch, and then we should be getting another 307 probably within the next month, which would be the 50%. Okay. Because last year was 50% and 50% this year, but I think this brings us down to about 50, 50, 40 some range. Yes. yes. But we'll look at that number and it'll be, okay. and it'll okay. be updated. And any other time we use it, we'll have that number on there so you'll know as we're spending it down, you know exactly where we're at. So I'll make a motion that we approve the ARPA monies, $23,290. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, administrative budget report ending 531 of 22. Uh, yes, um, <coughs> Chairman and Board of Select Members, um, we've got the May 31st um, financial report um, and uh, the accounts that are, or the accounts, the departments um, that are over. Um, giving you the, uh, the reasons um, and some of them, like for example in finance, it was three audits in nine months. <laughs> yeah. So some costs and, and items in, in terms of, of that there, town clerk elections. Um, the contracted services on the property appraisal, um, as I've told you before, it's not only a, the cost of the, the appraisal work, but it's also the cost of um, defending um, uh, the abatement cases um, that have come through. Um, nothing is significant in reference to um, being uh, out of line. Um, the bottom line for the general fund is um, ideally it would be at like 64.92% as of the end of May. And um, the town is um, currently 6.59% under budget. As, five, as a 531.22. So if you have any specific questions, I um, can try to answer, but um, a couple of these accounts will stay on here, or the line items will stay on here just based on the either the purchase, timing of the purchase. Um, now what you may see, um, I think, in the um, appraisal, as Lori and I had a discussion and uh, went back and found about $84,397.45 um, that were um, tied to the real property appraisal, but in looking back, they were appeal money, so we're going to look at um, adjusting those. So in the July report, uh, we'll move the $84,397.45 in expenses from this line item to the legal line item. Because it kind of falls into both areas, but I think it's easier to keep track of all legal costs under one mm -hmm. line area. Um, and then we can just use the real property expenses to cover the contract, and then we'll just cap for the other under legal. So um, you may see that um, point, or yeah, 7.67 um, change dramatically in reference to the July report. Um, if a, a portion of those expenses get moved over to legal, which will bump the legal. Line item up. Again, yeah. But basically, at 6.59 percent on the budget. On the budget. Mm -hmm. With fuel prices like they are, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can't, you can't. Nobody budgeted for the fuel prices like you know, they are right now. You know, we, we factored some increases, but you're right. I mean, uh, in, in, in terms of, of there, and um, I got a, an email today from. Um, Eversource through New Hampshire, and uh, I, th I think I sent a copy on to you all about mm -hmm. a potential 50% increase statewide in reference to utility rates for customers. Mm -hmm. So um, I would like to think that um, we'll do fine by the end of the year, but there is possible in reference to utility and gas um, just based on the uniqueness that happened in 2022, then we may get off a couple of those line items in reference to. Um, yeah. what it is, but those are line items that 
no matter what it is you have to spend, because I can't tell Paul and, and Mike, don't run the truck today because we've exceeded the gas budget for right. him. So, right. <laughs> but I, for the most part, uh, yeah, I mean, we may have uh, some line items within departments that may be over, but uh, the goal, as we always would be, is to try to come mm -hmm. at or under budget and at least we're at this point um, through the year um, at least going in the right direction. I was reading something where the town of North Conway has doing no paving at all this summer mm -hmm. so that they can use the money to plow the roads this winter. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so people are taking drastic measures to, yeah. to have a little bit of a fuel budget. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Doug and I you know, had talked of, about that and we definitely <coughs> won't put ourselves in a bind, but the, the, I say the advantage we have is that there was money voted on last year that didn't get spent. Yeah. So, there will be roads paved. Um, in fact, um, contracts we're in will be awarding. We're trying to complete the contract this week. Yeah, okay, and, and to get roads out there. So we've got the combination of not only what was voted last year, but voted this year. So that brings to about 800,000. And um, so in that process, you know, they're not gonna get $800,000 of road work done in one year, from, you know, June through this period of time. But, um, you know, I did see that, but I think, um, in our case, um, I'm comfortable going forward because that's money that should have been spent on those roads last and they should have been done last year. Yeah, so um, I don't want to sacrifice them to hang on to something when I know we'll be okay yeah. on the plowing side. Good. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda, Board of Selectmen topics. Um, so the first one up is Mill Street Parking. One of the things that we have for a problem down there, of course, I'm sitting up in the crow's nest down there overlooking stuff all day. And there's a lot of people that park on the sides of the road and interrupt traffic flow. Um, delivery trucks, um, there's people putting signage where the, the sidewalk is supposed to be and people have to go out in the street to go around them. Um, you know, I've, it's, it's nothing to see two delivery trucks lined up down there, not being able to get into the loading dock and then have uh, four or five cars on the side trying to get places. Um, it's interfering with some businesses as far as people being able to get through. Um, I just wonder if, if anybody has any ideas of what can happen down there to help straighten it out. Why are they, why are they not able to back into the loading dock? Is because they're they're using the loading dock for other things? I mean, because you've got you've got one picture here of a truck backed in there, but he's still poking out in the road. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff in front of the loading dock, so they can't get in. So, and we don't have any ordinances to clean that up, do we? Well, I mean, they move stuff daily, but sometimes when the truck pulls in, they've got a bunch of stuff there, and they just can't get in. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's some long trucks that are coming in. There's some 53-footers, um, and they hang way out on the road when they're delivering. Yeah. If they get back in. If not, they're unloading with a full truck right in the street. Right in the middle of the street, yeah. Um, and it does interfere with the traffic flow. I mean, they're... they're Are we okay businesses down there? I mean, I, I understand. Yeah. That, but they've got to get goods yeah. in. Is but the they, problem with the cars that are parking? or Because the trucks are going to come and go because they're right. going to service the businesses. And, they, and the only way they get to them is to pull up the business. They do it on Main Street. Yeah. And it's allowed by ordinance. Yeah. Yes, okay, thanks. So like the vinyl shop and the dog place there that um, people want to go to there, they just park on the other side of the street. So when the tractor and trailers pull up to back into the Shillings loading dock, they can't back in because there's no, there's no, no place to go and traffic stops. Is there designated parking behind in front of Shillings? There's two yeah, one or two spots, parking spots there. Okay. Two parking spots that have uh, meters. meters. Okay. But it's nothing to see five cars there. Yeah. Well, you know. 
that's an enforcement issue. And if it's if five cars over there, if they're out of the way, traffic can go by them. But once they get beyond the designated parking spots, if a delivery truck needs to back down into that area, they can't do it. Right. And then they're unloading in the street. Um, Not, the businesses have to be able to do business. And, absolutely. And with the extra cars down there, that's an enforcement issue, but... You know, I mean, the P, we only have so many PD. We can't park a, a, an officer down there, right, right. you know. Um, but I will, I, I will say to you that I did have, I was trying to come out of one street in Littleton and during this winter, and there was an 18-wheeler driver, and he absolutely refused to move his truck so any of us could go by. We had to wait for him to unload. We had to sit there and wait. And, and it wasn't down here. here on Mill Street. It was on another street in town. And I, you know, so I, I don't know the solution to the problem. And Rudy had his hand up. <laughs> I, I, I got a solution. <laughs> if Mr. Roger is going to take that chain out on his property, people will keep parking. And also, I got another solution. The guy that used to have the coffee shop, he's got a chain like this, empty the parking lot, if he takes that chain out, that's a parking lot for Miller Street. I, I don't understand, you know, they, they, I, Lisa, you know, it's, uh, you've, been, you've been working on this thing for a long time, Roger. Even before you were a salesman. And you are really something going on in yesterday town or early town. But now, now, you got problem with the cars, you know. And you're right. You know, a lot of time I stop over there in my truck. It doesn't matter. But I went over there the other night to watch a show. Your parking space was empty. Absolutely. It's same thing, same thing in the parking and a bad one. Private, I, that's a private area. Over but, here, you know what would happen? Bang, bang. Break all that chain and the parking. Yeah, but Rudy, you have to realize those those properties are private property, and we cannot require the private property owners to open up their parking lot. They, they I mean, is, we can't we can't require them to do that. My name is gonna take the way it is right now because you know he's been fighting this thing for last four five years. Most, it hasn't gone nowhere. most of this stuff that I'm showing is during the day. It's, yeah. When businesses are open and stuff is traveling. <clears throat> Okay. Anybody else? I'd like to add just one point of information is we do have the upcoming sidewalk project. When that comes through there, right now they can drive in the sidewalk right. area. That's going to change. They're that. not going to be able to. It's going to be a grand so curve. This issue will become mm -hmm. more of an issue at that time. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and just for the history, I, 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 Carrie, I think, was on the board at the time, but that was putting in those parking stalls down there was a trial period mm. for a year to see how they went, and then the board took action to make it make it permanent. permanent. But, I mean, okay. it could, it could be looked at. So can we take those two parking spots out? Well, we were hoping that it would limit the amount of time that people would spend, but the times I've even watched, everybody jumps out of the car, and they go to their designated space, and... I don't know. I mean, does anybody put money in the meter? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, first of all, it's a design issue more than it's an enforcement issue. You have a car path that turned into a roadway. Mm -hmm. It was a planning failure, complete failure of planning. But, you know, some of the business owners there are the biggest violators. Mm -hmm. And it's just not showing. Right. No. Okay? Right. Um, what, what is a little bit frustrating is that when these violations happen, we don't get a call so we can address it. I appreciate your comments. We can't yeah. be everywhere right. around. Right. Now, just on First Friday alone, you have all the First Friday events going on. We have everything going on at Remick Park, and then there's a there's a concert, another concert, mm -hmm. separate from First Friday going on at the same time. We only have so many resources and, and so many right. people. And right. you've never criticized us for that, but I just want to make that clear that, <clears throat> unfortunately, Mill Street can be reactive our um, parking enforcement officer 
is reminded frequently, you got to keep an eye on Mill Street. I don't think you should remove those parking spaces. No. Um, I've been down there where there have been trucks in the roadway, and I can get around them fine. Um, I think the fire chief or somebody was behind me at one point and got their vehicle right through. You know, total blockage of the roadway, you should have mm -hmm. called us, and we probably could have had a real good yeah. chat with that operator of that tractor trailer truck. Um, but there, you know, nothing's perfect. Um, you know, it's a delicate balance between allowing these business people to have their businesses thrive and yeah. to enforce the ordinance. The ordinance is not black and white. It even has a, a portion in there for discretion on deliveries, mm -hmm. which says that they can park in restricted areas for deliveries. Right. Um, I had an operator of a tractor trailer truck on Main Street parked on the crosswalk exactly where we had the fatality a few months ago. He was delivering to one of the businesses there, but it was his first time he'd been here and it was the only time, and he had one of the big 53 foot trailers and the people that normally deliver there deliver across the street. You know, so we have, we have sometimes a, the driver can't make it, there's a different driver. And there's all kinds of issues. Yeah. And we've discussed this time and time again. You know, perhaps it's time for the municipality to set up delivery points. I don't know, where people can pick up their product with a smaller vehicle and bring it. You know, you can drop it off with a large tractor trailer, they drive there with a smaller vehicle, and they bring it to those locations. Um, you, we don't have any licensing requirements for the town that requires that the people that put in those businesses on Mill Street provide parking for their businesses mm -hmm. or at least show us a plan. So there are a plethora of different issues. It's not just enforcement. It's it's road design, it's a, it's planning, it's 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 a mess. So, I, I guess that's what I'm saying because the design of the new road has the granite curves mm -hmm. and it's gonna narrow stuff even further. You won't be yeah. able to get around them. Right. Um, and that's the only in that's the only way out of Mill Street. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, people don't know how to read either. They'll do a UE, and then they'll head up the hill, and here comes another car down. That I, I'm that, trying to come down by pairs. That's nerve-wracking, because then there are people just walking around. And I you, just wanted to bring it to attention. Right yeah. now, that there is a problem still. Yeah. It's just, yep. we'll, we'll respond when somebody calls. If, if you see a vehicle, if there are five vehicles picking up two parking spaces, and they're all having a grub at one of the local restaurants and they're not present, we'll address that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, I just, next, uh, yeah, go ahead, I just had a couple things with um, selectman topics. Yeah. I just um, shout out to our police department, fire department for that um, yeah. untimely death the other day um, was heartbreaking. And to think that our guys were willing to, in a sense, put their lives on the line to, to um, save this gentleman. So it's very, very appreciative of, of that and for the leadership for both of you. And, um, and for the fires, I mean, the fire yesterday was We've got a lot of things that are that are happening that have really never happened before. So, mm -hmm. we are very appreciative of that. The other thing too is, um, Littleton lost a great man a week and a half ago. Skylar Sweet mm -hmm. just wanted to to bring that up. He was a selectman. He was very involved in a lot of things. He made a difference in the town. He had a tremendous impact on many many lives. So, it'll be a a huge loss for Littleton, so I just want to bring that up, yeah, okay. too. Yeah. Thank you. So, one other thing. Um, town Hall Options. May I? Sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jim, for providing us, and the gals in the office went through a lot of gyrations to get us the information for um, available properties for the town offices. Um, one of the things when I campaign, well, if you want to call it campaigning, my first article was the, um, the rent that we have to pay 
um, in the building that we're located in now. And one of my, I don't know if you want to call it a pet project, but one of my, my thoughts is to see what properties we do have available in town, um, which the town manager and his staff have provided us with quite a stack um, with information for rental, for purchase, for building, and whatever. So what I would like to propose is that the three of us take our time, or four of us actually, because I do want Jim involved in this very much. Um, I would like to take the stack that they provided us with and pick our top six independent, then sit down and have a work session and try to narrow those down to three if possible, or even physically visit the six sites to see what kind of viability they are for potential future town offices. Um, I, ideally, I would love to see a new facility built down on the property that we have where the DPW is, the PD, and the fire department. And um, I mean, I know we've got a big enough piece of property back there to build a facility for the town offices. My, my big soapbox way back was to get us back into the opera house. Uh, that is not going to happen. <laughs> so <laughs> I kind of let that one go. Um, but I just, I, my concern is, is spending all this money every year on a lease where we could be spending that on a bond for a building that we own, for a building that we can grow into. Um, so right now, I'd like to find some sort of an interim because I've got a feeling our lease is just going to go, go exponentially higher in the next several years. And I would much rather see that money go somewhere else. And I really don't want to burden the taxpayers with a lease that we're paying. Why lease when we can buy it and have it? So those are my thoughts. One of the problems is... I mean, and I know it's it's the future, but we're looking out a couple years anyway. Right. It has to be on right. the Warren article. Right. Uh, and I understand all that. that yeah. Yeah, I understand then all do that. do something. Um, but it, no, it's something that we need to address and look into. Any other thoughts on that, Jim? No, just in what um, Linda had said, I mean, I, if I understood it correctly, it almost sounds like it's a two-step process. You know, first step is what could be a transitional place, mm -hmm. meaning right. if we have a one-year lease and the bank didn't want to renew it, you know, where, where could we where go we knowing go? then that you're there for two or three years, why you would go through a process of an RFP on an architect and design, mm -hmm. and then they do a space analysis and design a plan so they give you an idea then of what the cost of a, a town hall would be. And then, then you've got the opportunity to put that out to the voters. And you are right, you're probably talking a minimum two year process before you'd even turn dirt. And that's if we started today. And right. So it, yeah, you're probably looking at easily a two to three year process. And if you were to build, I mean, probably not the best time in the world with interest no, rates. No, I know. But, but and, plus there are... the cost, but you, no, but you do have a valid issue. Yeah, right? and, and there, there are properties in here that we could purchase yeah. rather than building yeah, as and, well. So and that's what... Either that's way, why, they would still right. take probably a Warren article. Yeah, one way or the other, it's going to take a Warren article. Yeah. Refurbished, but yeah, you have a valid point. Meaning, yeah. You know, at some point in the town, whether it's buying a building or building a building, you own it. Right. And, you know... It's not like you have to worry about, oh my gosh, I've got to double it in five years. Right. I don't mean that in a negative, but Littleton right. is, is Littleton, so it's not going to be, a, right. you know, you have people here in the daytime with jobs and what have mm -hmm. you, but it's still a town of 6,000, so the town hall doesn't have to say, oh my gosh, we've got a plan for 20,000 square feet, and right. we've got to worry about it in five years. You can right. build one that, quite honestly, at least our lifetimes and maybe the yeah. room after us would be fine. <laughs> right. It's right. just a matter of... But I just, I, I, I would like to see us go forward this because I am concerned that we will not have a renewal on our lease and then we'll be out in the cold. So if we, if we start the process now, we'll have all our ducks in a row and we'll have everything ready if and when, you know. Yeah, no, that's... So do you want to set a, a time frame or a target date? For a workshop? I would, be, yeah, I, you know, we have the information, let's make a decision. I'm not one to draw stuff out. 
You know, I don't like a whole lot of discussions and hearing the same thing over and over again. I'd like to each of us take independently the pile, arrange it the way we think, what we feel are the top six. If you want to do, you know, a visit, then we could all do a visit or we could go individually, however, you know, however we can legally do that. Yeah. Um, you could go as a group, it. you just have to advertise right, technically. Right, right, which I don't have, I mean, I, yeah, you know, I don't have a problem with yeah, that at all. And Rudy would have the right to, yes. to come too. I mean, right. just remember from the public, not, yeah. in, not in the negative, Rudy. Really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. No, well, I mean, the, the public's going to be part of this because yeah. they're owning it. Yes. yes. You know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. their town hall. Um, but what I'm getting at is that there is, a, there is a way that you can see a building and the three of you can talk about what you're seeing. Right. As long as it's, it's advertised right. under the right, right. scenario. But um, it's... But, but I it's, think our, it's fir our first this thing... list in the sense of in, in finding out what, what's really viable. Right. What fits. And right. Some of that, I mean, the details wise, yes, I, I know what to do after we know where we want to go. But you guys have the history in some of these buildings, right. and you know, right. the key is going to come down to it's got to be minimum of 5,000 square foot, and that just yeah. keeps us as we are today. Right. Um, and, and that doesn't include any of the extra storage that they have stored, files and such that are stored other places, am I right? No, we have storage at the Opera House right. in, in terms of there, and, and, and you don't have a meeting space, which you right. might look at. If you were looking at buildings, we may look to right. incorporate that. But, right. but the first step would be to take like you said, that list, and at least sit down, and because there's probably some on there that maybe, yeah, yeah, they're not viable, or right. I mean, like for example, we have the school on there. Just knowing that the school may be doing something, so there's yeah. the potential of a building that doesn't mean it's there today. So, right, so right. If we can get at least narrowed down to what are some feasibilities, then yeah, staff can do the due diligence and get you the information. I mean, you guys can visit and see them, you know, at, yeah. at any t point in time. So next but, week, Tuesday, five o'clock. Um, I'm going to be in no, I, vacation. Before. Yeah, and I'll be gone. You've already approved it. I approve that? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> you Can I sign anything? <laughs> <laughs> you Maybe Vicki could put some dates together for yeah. us. Yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah next, put some dates in. Yeah, I'm going to be out of town and I have another meeting. Um, next week, it probably isn't good for much. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah no. Look at so. the packet and what okay. like it said, maybe it's yeah. a little bit of an idea. <laughs> As a group, it may be easier I, I would, to sit down and discuss the buildings and, and aspects of them and, and, and then whittle it, and we could do that in the workshop. Yeah, yeah. If we could do a work section probably the middle of July, maybe. Okay. That gives us enough time to really spend the time looking. And, I mean, all three of us are from town. We we'd probably know yeah. all these properties yeah. anyway. Um, so if Vicki can okay. put some dates together. And, and, Linda, you are right. Timing is critical because if... We operated, and we don't know. And I'm not here saying right. anything, you know, negative or what about the bank. But you know, it's a one-year lease, and if due to construction or other things that are going on, you know, right. they chose to leave that empty. Um, we would want to know before we get into the budget season because mm -hmm. both you all, the budget committee, and there may be need to be a warrant article, even on a lease mm -hmm. of money that may needed to retrofit a building. So, right. so yes, right. um, the sooner we get some direction. Yeah. At least we have some plan pending yeah. our lease status. So the next step is Vicki will put some dates together. And propose them to you all. And propose and them to us. get back to us. And then we'll get back. Okay. okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Andy. Okay, next on the agenda, public comments. Jordan Cannon? Rudy first. Oh, okay. Rudy? I agree. 150 percent within. Thank you, Rudy. A building that belongs to the taxpayer of real time and you know to the people. We build a new police station, we build uh, the DOT, right? Mm -hmm. you know, the garage over there. I mean, uh, it was a lot of friction in between people. <laughs> And uh, whoever is in charge, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. But, but we did. I think Linda, she made a very good approach for the people of Linda. And also, now the two things. If I don't make a mistake, I, mean, I hope not. But Carrie doesn't going to be around anymore. 
she's going to be a senator, which, you know, she's going to end up uh, down in Concord. Roger, I hope you get elected again. But if you don't get elected, bye-bye, bambino. You know, you go to. That doesn't mean the only one left It's Linda for another three years. As long as I have your support, I'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, you have my support. <laughs> you got my support. But anyway, that just means whatever she said, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. We can't pay $48,000 a year, you know, to the bank. What's the matter with these people? What do you think? People will go steal money and stuff like that? No. But like, they have a lot of property up here. If I don't make a mistake, don't you guys went to see the dollar, the dollar store? It got it? sold. It got, yeah. yeah. The property was been the sold. The property over there? Yeah, yeah it's sold. been sold. It, oh, it's sold? Yeah. Because you guys got a good deal for $2 million, which was uh, the best. Yeah, well. It's gone. Now we got a plan B. That's all right. You know, I, you know what? Listen, you mentioned, you mentioned that this is good for the citizen of Atlanta. And yeah. hey, believe me, what you say tonight is going to go around, which people will really appreciate. Thank you. And like I said, Carrie wasn't going to be here, Roger wasn't going to be here, that's just going to be We did that, Daniel. I will be for another year, year and a half. No, uh, you're going to be a senator. She can, she can do both. <laughs> the um, I think we should clarify though for you know for the record the um, the rate that the bank is giving us right now is even below uh, market rate. Although right. it jumped up significantly, right. they are still below market rate. In a if we were to buy or release another building on Main Street, it it would be. Seventeen dollars per square foot, I believe. So they are—they're helping us. It's between ten and twelve per square foot. So it's now. There's some, you know, we agreed to do some banking with them, and you know, it's uh they have been very, very good to us. We've been there 21 years. Two of those years, free rent. I mean, we were there. We asked them to help us out. We we're going through a really tough time. The town. Then they went up to 8,100. So for 19 years, we've paid 8,100 dollars. Um, and again, we've done some plowing and we've taken care of some trash removal, but it's been a, it's been a good partnership. And then, um, which I don't blame them, being a landlord, they wanted to bring that up to market value, which is fair. I mean, it's fair. And they had a couple other properties or bank um, situations in other towns had to do the same thing. They brought the attorney's offices up to um, market value as well. So in all fairness, um, I think that has to be, again, reiterated that what we've got there for the 48,000-ish um, is, is good. It is, even though it seems like it's significant, it is, it is good. Then we tax pay and we come on board on this particular subject, right? Because you already, you approach the negative aspect of it while Linda proposed. You know, I, I mean, could be I'm wrong, but I think it, you're going to vote no. I know that. No, no, I didn't say that, Rudy. Yeah. I, I'm just saying we've we've got to look at both sides. Right. One is finally up to market value, but because it's up, to, you know, sometimes getting kicked out of the nest isn't a bad thing. So, you know, we're <laughs> it, now we can take a hard look at okay, where we're at, what do, what do we want to do? Where do we, we go from here? Right. Yeah. So it's that. I don't think it's a bad thing, but I, I think it's only fair to be. Um, cognizant of the fact that the Bank of New Hampshire folks have been very good to us. Right. Um, they have. I mean, they have been good to us because the, you know, the rent that they charged us all those years was, has been a blessing for the town. But now... How many years was it the Bank of New Hampshire and how many years was it another... It was Laconia Savings before it, wasn't it? <clears throat> and then before that, it was... Indian Head. Indian Head. Yeah. But we've only been negotiating with what? Has Bank of New Hampshire 
have they been there all these 20, 21, 22 well, years? Well, with the acquisitions also comes the package of who's there, too. Right. So a merger right. acquisition, we're, we're still, even though they were previous banks that no longer exist, they were willing to continue. Take, yes. Right, continue with yeah. us. Yeah. You really want to award articles then about this subject, about Linda <coughs> She, well, Carrie, was, is, Carrie was just stating the facts of the, the history of what we were paying. And, I, and yeah. I mean, she's right. She is right. They have been good to us. But I think, I, I, you know, I, I sort of can see the handwriting on the wall. And I think it's worth our time to explore other properties. We may decide when our lease is up, if they decide they want to renew it, we may decide to continue for another year or whatever. Um, it, it, it's if you don't explore and get prepared, then you've got nothing. And I think if we take the time, and if we find something that's really inviting, yeah, we'll bring a one article. Yeah, no problem with that. I, I'm going to start the petition tonight, tomorrow. I got 25 people in my pocket. Right. You know, because that makes sense for me and for other people too. We can pay forty-seven thousand dollars to these people. As good as they are, hey, they are good. Yeah. Uh, okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's it. And we're done. Yeah. Which we'll one? we'll, we'll wait on them. Oh, is he here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jordan. I'm sorry. We'll wait on the dates. For... Yep. Hello. <laughs> So, good deal, I guess? Or? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, my name is Jordan Cannon. I live in Alstead. And what I'm doing is I'm speaking to various towns regarding an idea or a proposal I have that is, I think, the opposite of the proposal that's being promoted by those in favor of New Hampshire secession. Um, I attended the secession hearing for CACR 32 back in January. I've been paying attention since then regarding their ideas for what New Hampshire would look like if it were to secede from the United States. And quite frankly, it appears to be like a robber baron's paradise. Um, I attended Fort Fest this past week where they openly compared their plans to a Monaco. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with Monaco, but their, um, their track record with civil liberties is not at the same level as ours. So. I guess to balance that out, I've developed a very uh, non-affiliated, uh, peaceful middle ground proposal to just introduce into the mindset of people. So as the New Hampshire secession talk progresses, which I believe it will, and I can talk about why I believe that, um, there are, there's a more balanced approach to be considered versus the more the strong little wealthy people should rule. Um, one of the presentations I sat in on last week was uh, attended, or I guess the panelists were Mike Silva, Sylvia, who uh, I guess was one of the New Hampshire representatives that brought forth the bill, um, a representative from the California exit and a representative from the Texas exit. Um, the New Hampshire exit now has a political action committee, so there is a funnel to get funding. Um, there's, uh, it's concerning, I, I work for the town of Charlestown, to see townships governed by consensus in a peaceful way, trying to accommodate all the members of that community, um, that being threatened by an alternative is kind of prompted me to act and kind of put myself out there and be a little bit chicken little and a little bit, I guess, uh, promoting a peaceful resolution or a peaceful option to things. So that's that's more or less why I'm here. If you want to ask me some more specific questions, what I have in mind or the New Hampshire secession thing, I can talk about that more as well. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I definitely can. <laughs> can I ask a question? Yeah. So I went online, um, Jordan, mm -hmm. um, with the Connecticut River 8 mm -hmm. project, and I didn't see anything 
mm -hmm. um, on it. So is there nothing posted? There's, it is intentionally not on the internet because I, I wanted to be cultivated and promoted at the township level because on the, the internet there's a question of authenticity, at least from my perspective, about what is real and what is not because it appears that the internet can be kind of skewed with algorithms to kind of um, help people find what they want to find. So I'd rather just speak about it openly as a person and people could see what it was and ask directly instead of going to the Facebook page where things are made to look as optimal as possible, um, which honestly is how I am perceiving the New Hampshire exit plan. It's, it's being packaged and promoted as a, we're all going to be wealthy and rich and have more freedom than we do now. And I'm not sure if that's really realistic. Um. Is this something more maybe it should be at the state level? Yeah, that's um, what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, if, if the future secession would move forward, it would be a state thing. So I'm not sure how much townships would be involved in crafting whatever that would be. And again, I'm not saying it's definitely going to move forward, but it does have the funding and the, the will of certain people to, to build it, at least to be more known and recognized in the public world than it is now. Um, I, I, from my experience working with this like we're in Charlestown, this is kind of like where rural government is happening, just from my personal experience, not to demean the federal or the state, but people can speak openly in public select boards in this state and in, in, in Vermont, so that has led me to want to do it this in this manner, um, where people could go back and think about it without me thinking, okay, I don't want to present like I'm being elected or follow me or do anything like this, it's more speaking to the people directly. Just very quickly though, in terms to the chair um, selectman, but what you're, you're advocating um, is not currently allowed under New Hampshire law. The town doesn't have the right to change its form of government. The only ability they have is they can go from three to five board members mm -hmm. with a vote of the public, but the actual delegation of the town's duties are established by New Hampshire, so it's the New Hampshire legislature that would have to change the state law in reference yes. to incorporation. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not advocating you take this up now necessarily. I'm introducing this idea as something to maybe cultivate in anticipation of the secession thing growing, which for my attention I've been giving it, it's something that um, I've, again, I might sound a little chicken little here, but I think it'd be wise for everyone to look at what is being said and what is being advocated and not, not promise, but you know, the, uh, the, the pitch of promoting it, I guess. So from hearing you correctly, what you're asking New Hampshire to do is secede from the United States. No, no, I'm not, I'm not advocating for okay. secession. I'm saying that from paying attention to the secession and hearing what they have in mind, my concern over the civil liberties of not just New Hampshire, but everyone else around this area, um, it's, it's fairly alarming. So this is to put something out there uh, almost to kind of neutralize if things were to develop. If, if things were to happen at a federal level, which again, I'm not going to say the federal level or the federal government is falling or collapsing, but there are things that you know, I think some people are seeing the vision at a level that's possibly concerning. So the idea of secession for some seems more realistic now Supposedly, the uh, secession hearing in January was the first ever in this country's history where there's a public hearing regarding secession for a state to secede. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what's being alleged. Um, so no, I'm not advocating anything like that, but I am promoting um, a middle ground alternative idea because, quite frankly, those folks, there's a monoculture of those who are in favor of liberty are correct, and those perhaps on the left, or the socialists, or whatever, they're the ones that are wrong or incorrect, and this is more of a, okay, liberty and socialist people can meet. I mean, the design of the United States was to kind of, you know, checks and balances of people who disagree can come together um, to perhaps remind people of that. He is right. We're in, in 
interesting and challenging times. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, right. Thanks for your yeah. time. Thanks for making the trip up here. Oh, no Thank you. The Board of Assessors, we have nothing. Did you want to do any more public comments? Any more, no. any more public comments at all? Okay. No Board of Assessors? Looking for a motion? Okay. Make a motion that we um, go into non-public session, or that we adjourn the regular meeting. Adjourn the public. Yeah. All second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Then we have a motion to go into non-public. Non RSA 91-A colon 32A. I'll make that motion. Carrie Gendra. I'll second it. Linda McNeil. All in favor? Aye. 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 